Hello everybody and welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. So, it's about damn time, isn't it? We are now going to go through, well I'm going to go through, the start upgrade for the ATR 600, which was recently released a couple of months back. I know I'm a bit behind the curve, but it's whatever. Oh, Jesus. No, we do not want to look at the ceiling. So, first off, you've got all your screens across here. You've got one, two, three, four, five screens. Very generous. You've got your FMS down here. Your throttle quadrant right here. And then obviously your over panel over here, overhead panel over here. And it comes with an AFB. Not looking at you, PMDG. Still waiting on that one. Anyways, so first things first, what we're gonna do is go to the AFB, go to aircraft, make sure the wheel chocks are on. Make sure the parking brake is applied, which it is. This is your parking brake. That's your throttles and that's your mixture for your engines. And you have your flaps over here. So, want to make sure ground power is on, just to make sure. And then we're going to go over to the overhead panel. So we're going to scooch up over here and we're going to turn on all the external power. And then we're going to turn the battery on. Doing some weird noises, don't worry, it's doing the T-test, as I like to call it, or the Tetris test. So we're just going to wait. Make sure all these screens come on. F messes up, we're just going to leave that for now. And wait for these screens to come on. Middle screen, you'll notice you've got a lot of flashing lights, but as we go through the start up, those will slowly start to go away. Got your map and GPS, and all the relevant information. Right here, it's got all your engines and all that good stuff. Engine information on there, engine information on there. Over here, you've got your landing gear, you've got your anti skid, you've got your power management. which is set to take off, so we're going to leave that to take off. We're going to leave everything down here as it is. We're not going to touch anything down there. We're going to go straight into the over pan overhead panel. So we're going to turn on the hydraulics, which is these three here, blue, orcs, and green. And then we're going to turn off or put on the heating. So the windshield heating, the probe heating, you notice now, there's a lot less stuff on there. So, you can put the prop brake on if you want to start it up without the props going, but I'm just for this one, I'm just going to leave it there and leave it ready. So going to arm the emergency exits, we're going to put the lights to bright, going to leave all that, I mean that's pretty much self explanatory, I mean obviously you'll only put these on once everything is ready to go, oh, and we'll put the beacon and strobe light on. <coughs> right, so if we go down here, it's now telling us that air pack 1 and 2, air bleed 1 and 2, so when I go over to here and turn that on now the air bleeds still aren't going so oxygen supplies on Manual supply. Right, so we're going to leave that there. Go 
Okay, so we'll just leave that off. It's got low pressure at the moment, but obviously that'll go up once we start getting the aircraft going. So we've got the battery on, we've got the external power on, we've put the heating on, we've put the air on, we've armed the emergency exits, we've got our logo, well, strobe and beacon on. And we've got the lights too bright. So we're gonna go down to the bottom here. And we're gonna go into in fact no, I'll leave the FMS to the last. Then to get the engine started, you will then run the fuel. Bring these two throttles up. And then we'll go down to start A and B and we'll both turn the starters on. Now what should happen... You can hear the engine starting up, there's the props going. And lo and behold, we've just got the oxygen, but it's not flashing, so... Get the start engines off. Cross feed on. And now we're going to go into the FMS. So we're just going to hit the top one and go in, in it. We're going to go into the position, initialize. We're going to click last position and it'll already put it in. And then we'll go back to the return. Then we'll go into the weight. Now what you do with this, obviously if you're on same brief, obviously you'd have to put in your own weight, your zero fuel weight, fuel on block and gross weight. But... For this one, for this example, you're just going to hold this button down and there we go and rinse and repeat for the next slot and there you go. Then you've got your units, if you want to go in Fahrenheit, depending on Fahrenheit, pounds, hectopascals, depending where you are in the world you're flying. Then you've got your nav data over here, and then you've got your performance. <laughs> so you're putting your cruise, so let's say, we'd go for 10,000, and it goes there. And that is how you do it in a cruise mode, you've got long range max cruise. You go to flight plan initialize into route and then you'd put in your route here so let's say we're at Newcastle E G N T forward slash and let's say we're going to Manchester so E G C C put it in there and then hit the execute and then it'll come up with just this flight plan but if you want to add the departures so yeah, we're taking off runway 207, we'll go for the girly one tango. There's no transition, we'll hit execute, and it's coming there with our departure. And then you do the same, so you go to next, down to Manchester, and let's just say, for instance, we'll go... Mm, uh, that's 2-3 right, we'll go the Axie one Mike, Mike Charlie Tango execute and there you have it obviously I'm not going to go through how you put in all the waypoints that'll be a separate video when I do a more detailed version of this FMS so and it's pretty much the same as all other aircraft depending on what ones you fly mostly obviously if it's 
Airbus. This is loosely based on Airbus. Clear the flight plan, discontinuity. And there you go. That is your discontinuities. And you'd go go through your flight plan, getting rid of all those continuities, because what will happen is, when you get to a certain point, then you've got a discontinuity, your plane will just fly in a straight line regardless. It'll just keep going, until, unless you clear that, then it'll follow the route. Or, if that happens, what you can do, is go into flight plan, or, if I go flight plan, if that happens, Say we've just come in from MTS 12 and for some reason Gurley's not turning up but you want to get the Axis. You can overfly or not. And you can also use it as a holding waypoint. So we've got the data. We've got timers. Units, status, config data, save the status, and these, oh, so there it is, yeah, so DTO means direct to. So say, as I was going before, you've got a flight plan discontinuity, for some reason you've not known it, so you haven't deleted it like what I showed you just before. Your plane's going to fly straight forward, so you go, oh, oh what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So let's just say the flight plan discontinuity was here. And you need to get to Monty. So what you do is, you click on Monty, execute, and boom, goes in the next waypoint. And we're going direct to Monty. So, that is it, and to bring the power up a bit more on, you can now move these up to auto, or fall, and you can kind of hear the engines spooling up a bit more, they'll get louder. There we go, they're a bit louder, and if I was to go... In auto, it manages the engine automatically. So, let's go through some more bits and bobs about the inside of the aircraft. So, go back into the FMC, Hit that menu button, back into there, go into init, performance initialize, obviously cruise, weight, fuel flow, all that good stuff. Performance. And it tells you the speeds for a non-limited runway, which is 0, 07, it's not limited, it's got the transition altitude. Obviously if you're on VATSIM, that transition altitude will go off the charts on Navigraph. It's telling me that my V1 and V-rotate v speeds are 112 and my V2 is 115. But it's to go. So. And there you have it. You got your messages. Your V-nav. So your vertical navigation. Your RMS, so this way you enter your score codes and your radios for those who are on BATSIM. So, 122 decimal 8, so 122 decimal 8, which is Unicom. In it goes. And go on your standby. And you double click, and you just click it once, and you can bounce between the two. And obviously, for your score, say 4545. And then I dent. And that's how you put in your squawks, your ADFs, all, all, your navigation, and your radios. You've got two radios, VHF1 and VHF2, which is more than enough. And then you have your radar. So you've got your weather and map. 
so if they go into here. So, what will happen now is, we've got the active radios. You got your min gain and max gain. You got your stabilizers. And then you have always a nifty little fallout compass here if you just want to do some VFR and you just want to take a quick glance of where you're going. And then in the middle here, probably wondering what this is, this is your autopilot. So it's kind of familiar to the old, to like the Cessna cockpit, you've got your flight director, your heading mode, your nav mode, approach mode, back course mode, nose up and nose down, your vertical navigation, your altitude, vertical speed, your indicated airspeed, your autopilot switch, your dampener and your speed hold. And then you've got your ILSs 1 and 2 and your courses and your heading so you can sync the heading and this also turns the heading wheel you got your barometer here your brightness button there Brightness buttons, contrast buttons, and then you've got, if you want to turn them on, turn them off. Got a nice little clock here, and that is it. And you've also got your FB. Of course, you could just go into the game and just press Control A and it'll start up. But where's the fun in that? So, there you have it. That is pretty much how to start up and set up in light detail your ATR 600. So I do hope this video is helpful and there will be more guides on how to use the autopilot and how to integrate the FMS in the sim brief in due time. And I shall see you guys later and I hope you stay well and take good care. And remember, if you like what, you, what you're seeing here and you like more of these guides, let me know down in the comments below what guide I should do next and don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe. So I can get more of these videos out there. So once again, it's thank you from me. And I hope you have a great day, night, evening or morning, wherever you are in the world.